Thank you so much for coming on Wellness Your Way, Druvin. I'm thrilled to have you here. No worries. Thanks so much for having me, Megan. I'm looking forward to uh, speaking. As am I. I know you have a lot of great information to share with our audience. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Druvin Patel. I'm an optometrist from London. I studied to uh, look after people's eyes effectively in 2011 to 15. And um, while I was studying, while I was doing my uh, education, I was working on the weekends at a well-known optician here in the UK known as Vision Express. In the USA, it's known as Grand Vision. And um, the lead optometrist, she gathered the team, including myself, and she said, hey, we've got this really new product, really cool new product innovation that we that we have for people that wear glasses. And she said, it's something called Blue Control, and it goes onto your glasses, just like an anti-reflection coating. And she said, if patients put this on their glasses, they'll be able to beat eye strain. And I was naturally intrigued because I've grown up with my mother always telling me, looking at screens is bad for your eyes. You'll get square eyes and, <laughs> you know, stay away from screens, right? But she never had a reason for it. She just said, it's just because it, they will. And yeah. I was really naturally, I was naturally intrigued when, when I came across this and so much so that I went back to the university and I demanded from the faculty that I did some research around it. Um, so somehow I got my way and I did a research project on how blue light affects the eye's physiology, which is the eye structures, and also the circadian rhythm, which is our sleep and wake cycle. And after spending about a year researching this, I found, yes, artificial blue light from screens and lighting around us caused eye strain and it could lead to migraines and headaches, but it also suppressed melatonin, which is the mm -hmm. hormone that allows our bodies to fall asleep. And my mind was blown at that point because this was kind of in the 2013 14 realm where it was the iphone 3 you know early on in the smartphone <laughs> yeah. era and i thought screens are only going to get bigger and brighter we're going to we're going to be using them even more and it's a massive pain point because mm -hmm. for me i was concerned you know selfishly i was like right i need to do something about this because i don't wear glasses so what can i create to limit my exposure and that's where the journey began with OcuShield with what I created, which is effectively uh, medically registered screen filters and glasses that filter harmful blue light. And um, yeah, that's where the journey started. And that's how I got fascinated with looking at artificial light and blue light and how it affects our, our health. Wow. And what an appropriate time to get fascinated in 2013, because you were right in your prediction then. The screens have gotten bigger and bigger and we've been spending more and more time. I mean, especially for people during the thick of the pandemic, I think every single person was staring at a screen, you know, 12, 14 hours a day. But even in general life, we've become even more attached to screens, which probably would have blown our minds back in 2013. So I'm glad you got started on it back then. And you mentioned the two main uh, symptoms that you experienced or that you learned about in your research, one being just brain fog and eye strain, and the other one uh, being melatonin altering and interfering with our sleep. So how would people, if they're getting too much blue light, how would they know? What would they be feeling? How would you advise them? Yeah, totally. And I think first and foremost is one, we're all individuals and, you know, we all react differently to different stimuluses. So I, I always, I always say with everyone, you know, always look at what you're doing and how it impacts you. There's always rule of thumbs, but yeah. you could be affected more so, or you could be affected less. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when it comes to eyes, if you're being impacted by blue light exposure, what you'll feel is after two or three hours on you know of screen use what you'll start finding is you'll start getting tired eyes yeah um which effectively can lead to um you itching your eyes uh mm -hmm. blurry vision or even um pain behind the eyes okay. and it starts as early as two to three hours but most most people put up with it they're in the deep flow of work they probably won't notice it and then it's only after they've done eight hours of working at, you know, at their office or at their home, wherever they're working now and on screens. And they're yeah. like, wow, actually, I need, I'm so happy I'm resting now because my yeah. eyes yeah. and I just feel so fatigued. Um, so, you know, if you're feeling that, then blue light might be contributing towards that visual stress. Was it, we've got to imagine 
the same way we go to the gym to work out a muscle group we usually do you know seven to 12 reps and then you have a rest the same way our visual system it's it's a muscle it has it has muscles and it also has a phenomenon called accommodation now usually you should be having a break every 20 minutes from looking at something close up um but we we you know we go on for hours and you're like oh wow look at the time you know you, <laughs> you don't even realize and um yeah it all, it all contributes towards this stress that um affects our eyes and and our visual system so that's how it affects our eyes um secondly when it comes to sleep now th this is really interesting because um melatonin is the hormone that um is in low concentration during the day right you have high levels of cortisol and you know that's you you're staying awake and your body's not ready to go to bed but as soon as the sun sets the melatonin production in your body begins and you need high levels of it for your body to be well rested when you fall asleep as well right so the first thing you'll notice is you'll struggle getting to sleep so okay. you'll be tossing and turning you'll, you'll be thinking why can't i get to sleep it's because the blue light has stopped the melatonin being produced and then secondly if you do somehow manage to get to sleep if you've counted enough sheep um you won't get a well rested sleep because if your body's on edge um you know again this happens when there's low levels of melatonin in the body is your body's still awake and it's still being receptive to sounds to light um or sensations on your skin and therefore it can't you know your body does has so many processes when you're sleeping cleaning the brain of toxins for example it can't and regeneration of muscle and yeah. it can't do that optimally if you don't have high levels of melatonin so yeah the eyes and sleep blue light affects it in massive ways and those are kind of example the main examples i'd say uh for you to watch out for and look out for um when it comes to your eyes and sleep oh i love this i have so many questions coming from this i'm going to start where you finished at the end melatonin because i hear a lot of people say oh well i'll just take melatonin it's fine and i'm not a huge fan of taking supplemental melatonin because it can falsely alter your body's circadian rhythms and and make you reliant on that exogenous melatonin i believe like you said we need to get our bodies in the rhythm to actually produce it um i did not believe this to be true because I have good sleep latency. I feel like I always fall asleep on time, but I would always wake up at night and I measure my sleep with my aura ring, my Fitbit, all this kind of stuff. I'm like too much on the data side sometimes. And it makes a big difference if I have blue light before bed or not. It truly, it shows up in the data. It's amazing. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And you can see, yeah, from yourself that it's uh, impacting you. But I think we've you know, to, to your point around melatonin supplementation, you know, it, it will help you get to sleep. But yeah. if, you, if your natural body isn't producing melatonin at the level you need, you'll have that big spike in melatonin from the supplementation. And then, I mean, it depends on the, the, ingre the quality of the ingredient, the bioavailability yeah. of what you're taking. But yeah. throughout the night, you still, your body still needs to produce that melatonin so you can have a restful, well-rested sleep. So you, you won't get the full impacts of, you know, limiting that blue light exposure. And yes. it's, 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 a, it's an aid, which I know for some people, it's really useful because yeah. they suffer from insomnia, which clinically they, you know, they, they can't do anything and they need to take it. Right. Um, but yeah, you got, I guess we've got to be cognizant of also what happens once you're asleep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And maybe not relying on that as a, first resort only using the supplemental melatonin if you've tried all the other things, including blue light blocking, uh, maybe having a wind down routine, doing some meditation, et cetera. So I think we're on the same page there. Um, the 20 minutes was really interesting to me that you just said. So I will always recommend, and I don't really know why I have this. Maybe I saw a study sometime. I'll recommend like a 50 minute time chunk and then take a little break but you say 20 minutes which i think would be really hard for people to do do you do that so i'll be honest i, I do 45 minutes um, okay. i don't do 20 because 20 minutes goes goes so quickly um the, re the reason why the 20 so i'll explain why it's 20 minutes so one it's it's just easy for people to remember so it's a uh, Every 20 minutes, you should look away for 20 seconds 
okay. at least 20 okay. feet away. So you've got the three 20s there, right? So when the 20 minutes hits, you're looking away for 20 seconds and at least 20 feet away. That means out the window or down the corridor. And um, yeah, it's just something easy that people can remember. It's not it's not the same. You can't do the 45, 45, 45, was it? It's too, right. you know, it's too, long, too long. But that 20, I think the important bit is, is, is the, the amount you have that break for 20 seconds and how far you look away. Um, and if you are someone where, like me, I, I'm on a screen for work a lot of the time, yeah. Um, yeah. it's not very practical because I get into deep flow and I like to nail a project in 45 minutes, get really deep into it. Yeah. Um, so what I do is I set timers and I'm like, right, 45 minutes done. Now I need to get up, look far away with my eyes and reset mm-hmm. the system. So again, it comes back to your individual preferences. I've got a rule of thumb there for 2020, yeah. but again, if you're someone that you know is going to be on screens longer then you might want to just extend that a little bit so it suits so you can actually do it because doing it is better than not doing it at mm-hmm. all and if you can't do 20 minutes then I'd rather you push it a little bit further yes I agree and I think I have seen some research that you might be corroborating here which is if you look in the distance if you look far away. And ideally, if you look at something natural, like I have a window right here and a door actually, thank goodness. And I go try to step outside, look at the green, look far away. Why is that good for our eyes? Yeah. So again, it comes down to a phenomenon of accommodation. You know, if you look at, if you put your finger in front of your nose, right. And you bring it in right towards your, and you touch your nose, what happens is one, you see double, but also your eyes go they cross to, closer towards um, together. Uh-huh. And what it's called is convergence. Okay. Now, when your eyes converge, they're actually working a lot harder than they, than they are when they're looking straight ahead because ah. they're not, they're not the, you know, when you're converging, your muscles have to work together and then again, accommodation gets activated. Okay. When, when you're looking straight ahead, your, your muscles aren't really doing that. They're just holding their place. They're not really working as hard. And also the accommodation isn't activated. So, they're in a relaxed state and therefore they can carry on doing what they're doing for longer. So it's really beneficial if you're just looking further away, um, your, your eyes are in a relaxed mode and it's, you know, your eyes are going to feel a lot more better if you're, you're looking further away all day rather than looking at something really close where your eyes have to converge all the time. So interesting. Okay. Very cool. Well, I think you have appropriately scared us away from staring at screens straight for 12 hours in a day. This is very good. I'm actually wondering if there's any benefit of blue light at all. Now, I'm going to tell you the reason for my question. Dr. Andrew Huberman, he talks a lot about resetting the circadian rhythm by seeing blue light in the morning intentionally. And I just recently tried a brain tap. I don't know if you're familiar with that device where it's shining blue light in your eyes and like some kind of almost like psychedelic pattern or something like that. And my instinct is like, no, humans have not evolved. Like 5,000 years ago, there was no screen shining blue light in your eyes. So I doubt it, but I trust these researchers. So what's your opinion? Is blue light ever good? Yes. So there is good blue light. Um, Good blue light should come from the sun naturally um, where possible. Um, But you should definitely wear sunglasses when getting that blue light. And so the good blue light, it extends from 470 nanometers to 500 nanometers. Okay. And that is what sets your circadian rhythm. And you should have it the, fir- the first thing where as you wake up, right up until midday. Okay. Anything okay. after that um, doesn't have its, its most beneficial impact. Um, but yeah, I'd say get it naturally. I'd avoid, you know, getting your iPhone and putting it in front of your face. <laughs> wake up like don't 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 use artificial light to stimulate your circadian rhythm you know you can get something called seasonal affective disorder lamps which are lamps which have the right amount of lighting if for example here in the uk we we have you know it gets really dark in winter and you know Mm -hmm. the sun doesn't appear until late morning and you 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 know you're not going to get that natural lift so sometimes you need a little bit of a um artificial device and those are great because actually the best ones um are safe for your eyes right that the blue light that's been emitted isn't the 400 to 465 nanometers which can cause 
eye damage or visual stress or affect mm-hmm. your eyes and skin but it has the the, the good blue light which generally isn't going to affect those things but just your melatonin so that's what you need to look after and look for so yes there is a good blue light which you should get during the mornings but naturally where possible gotcha okay I actually didn't realize that the that specific spectrum came from the sun as well so now it makes so much sense why it's good for us to get sun in the morning and uh why the sun naturally sets in the evening I love it Thank you for closing that gap. So like I've been mentioning, I wear, I've been wearing blue light blocking glasses at night for many years. They've improved my sleep significantly. And because I take these breaks in the day and I look outside at the horizon and the green and all this stuff, I don't feel the eye strain, but I'm probably still getting too much blue light. I'm literally, as you are, I'm sure on 12 plus Zoom calls per day, I stare at the screen all day, even with the breaks. So does that, do I need to be worried about like my eye health long-term or maybe put another way, if I don't feel the symptoms, am I still getting too much? (laughs) Yeah, really good question. So when we're talking about eye health long-term, there's a fair few research studies and papers already out there that look at either in vitro which is effectively in the lab or cohort studies where they follow people across um, a small or long period of time and there's already research pointing towards um, blue light in large quantities in a short period of time you know it's been it's been done in mice and monkeys for example and it showed that it causes retinal cell death and if you if in the center of your eye in the retina the back of the eye you have something called the macula and that's where these cells have been affected and um, what it's pointing towards is age-related macular degeneration which Mm -hmm. is a disease of the eye which usually at the moment in the sixth seventh eighth and ninth decade of your lives you suffer from this and which results in a black hole in the middle of your vision so if you imagine looking at a piece of paper or just looking at someone's face face someone that has that condition they'll have a black hole because the, the, the cells there are dead and they can't receive the light and transmit it into an image to the brain now it's really interesting because obviously these are these are research papers which are citing hey there's something we should be concerned about um they they haven't been able to do that research long term on adults using screens or artificial lights and i don't think that will ever come because one you need to be able to follow around people for 30 40 years yeah <laughs> to no one's going to fund that kind of study because it'll be too right. expensive um and it's just it's just a really complex disease in that in that sense and it's something that I'll, I'll give you another statistic here you know kids eyes they're twice as susceptible to blue light and uv light damage than adults right wow um, because the lens in their eye it doesn't develop until their teenage years mm. now if we look at a disease like age-related macular degeneration which happens in our latter light um kids you know we won't know the impacts on kids until they get to that part of their life but if you compare if you put the two hypotheses together you can kind of make an educated guess to say right well it's not going to be beneficial (laughs) for kids was they've not they're growing up with you know in the pandemic we saw their ipads for work play you know everything they were you know literally there um because they had to and they've you know i think a lot of schools have now adopted that as well so it's something that should be on our radar. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying that we should be, you know, overly scared in that sense. Right. But it's, it's just being aware because I always believe prevention is better than cure. Um, so limiting what we can do and you know expanding our knowledge around these things is always best. Wow, that is really scary. I didn't know that about kids being twice as susceptible, and it makes total sense. We don't have the research on them yet because. The people who are in their 60s, 70s, 80s now, they didn't have this amount of screens growing up. So goodness, I'm scared about what's going to come in the future. But like you said, no fear mongering here. We're just going to do what we can to prevent it. And you have some really good strategies, which we'll talk about. Actually, why don't you go ahead and preview your company right now? You developed this company with amazing products and tools to um, help us mitigate the damage. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, sure. So the company is called OcuShield and 
you know, we're the world's only regist medically registered products. So we're registered with the FDA in America and MHRA in the UK, which is the Department of Health. And why that's important to us is we're, we're a team of clinicians. So, you know, we're a team of optometrists and sleep experts and all of our products um, that, you know, whatever, whatever way you want to use them. So we have screen protectors that go onto your phone or laptop because some people don't like to wear glasses, which we always also do. Yeah. Um, so we have the form of screen filters or glasses that filter out the blue light. And um, we also have a lighting product called the Oculamp. Lamp. So we talked about uh, seasonal affective disorder before, but our lighting product is actually one that allows you to control the color temperatures and intensities of the light. It's flicker free and also emits low blue light. So again, it was a really popular product in the pandemic because people were working from different rooms and want to control yeah. the light and lighting is so important and something that's also not um discussed enough so in a nutshell Occhishield exists to let eyes thrive but all of our products filter the blue light without changing the colors on the screen so you may have on your apple iphone or an, uh, a macbook you have a software called night shift or night mode which changes your colors and turns everything orange right yeah um, yeah I was a user of that as well, but I just turned it off because it just gets annoying. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. There was many other people like me. And what we strive to do is to limit as much blue light as possible without changing the colors on the screen. Because no one wants to scroll through Instagram or watch Netflix or send the email when everything looks, the, you know, ugly orange tinge. So that's, and even more, children, children turn that off because they hate it. <laughs> and for parents, they want to know their children are protected. So it's important to have something there. That's why I think that you're, that's why I actually put this question right here. I think that the shield for kids is genius because for me, A, I don't have a problem putting on my glasses. I don't really forget and I don't care if they look weird or whatever, like it's fine. And B, if I'm sending emails, honestly, I don't really care if the color is different, but for kids, people who are very into visual stuff or for kids who are gaming and they're going to turn off the night shield and they won't use their glasses. I think the shield is so necessary now for phones. I will highly recommend that for parents of kids who are on their devices too much. And anyone, like I can imagine my husband, he's much more visually sensitive than me. If the picture looks off at all, he doesn't like it. If he can't stand watching things that aren't in HD or whatever. And he, I'm sure turns off his night shield. So he would, or night, whatever you call it, night focus, whatever on the iPhone, but he would really benefit from the shield. That's a great use case. And then for me, I'll just keep on wearing the glasses most of the time. Exactly. Exactly. If you're a fashionista like yourself, then I'm you know, not, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> there you go even if you're not a fashionista, yes you know, if you're not wearing the glasses do it and I think the glasses are great as well you know you, you mentioned a great point about you know for children the screen filters are amazing was children will chuck off glasses and yeah, yeah. You know, you'll have a hard time managing that um and I'll give you one reason why I like the glasses as well is um as I mentioned lighting around us is important and we also don't we, we underestimate how much blue light is in the led lighting around us mm. and if you look at the iso certifications and guidelines there's actually more blue light in the lighting around us and the reason that it's allowed to be is because it's indirect lighting because we're not staring at it right we're not wow. a direct source but if you add up if you have multiple light bulbs in your home mm -hmm. uh, and it's all white led lighting again that's going to be impacting you as well day to day so if you're wearing glasses you can also mitigate the risks of around you and if you're on a tv or whatever um so that also helps on that that side that is so interesting you're making me uh consider and not even consider i'm committing right here to wearing my glasses more through the day because i actually don't have the overhead lights on my office like i said it's right near outside so i have tons of natural light but then i have this ring light sh shining right in my face which i'm sure mm. has blue light right behind my computer which definitely has blue light so glasses are coming on more through the day and then i'm going to get a computer shield as well or laptop shield so thank you for this um and and like you mentioned you're the you have class one medical rating from mhra the first screen protector 
to be considered a qualified medical product. So I know there are lots of ones out there. And frankly, I don't really know how to tell if I'm looking on Amazon or something. It's hard to tell through their advertisements, which ones are good or which ones are not. But I can um, understand that you've gone through all this certification process, which couldn't have been easy. Your, your product must be very high quality. So thank you for that. Yeah, no problem, man. It's, it's really important. And as you said, there's lots of products that claim to look blue light. And for us, it's important to provide consumers with the best possible product. And that's why, you know, I've spent over seven years of my life kind of dedicating myself to this and constantly improving what we do. And um, yeah, it, it, it's why we, we like to think that our products are the best and also support consumers in the right way. Yes. Amazing. Now I'm thinking of one more use case that doesn't really apply, doesn't apply to me at all because maybe seven years ago or so, my husband and I said, no phones in the bedroom, like absolute zero and we don't have a TV. So that really makes it easy for us not to scroll at night or um, just get sucked into watching something or whatever. So for me, again, watch, using my glasses when I'm, meandering around that's great but for people who do scroll in bed they really need a shield in fact i would encourage them to go the next step and not scroll at all in bed can you talk to us at all about the detriment of scrolling through our phones late at night yeah totally and um it's there's this term called sleep hygiene um where it's really important what you have and what you do in the bedroom um you know when it comes to your bed there's only two things you should be doing there which yep. is one is sleep and the second is having sex you know there's nothing else you should do because that should be your haven where your body knows and if you're if you've got multiple things going on like a, a phone or a macbook where you're confusing your mind that that space is not just for those two things but you're having to think about work or entertainment or yeah. something else yeah. you're really creating a complex um complex space for, for your body to work out what what it should be doing there and you know now we know how how much like screens and what we do on them how the dopamine release can impact us as well so mm -hmm. if we're on screens just before we go to bed we're on a high because we're getting this dopamine from the latest instagram post and yeah. then you're going to try to go to sleep and then your body's on a high but again it's not you know leveling out and your mind's active so that's it it's a really gruesome cycle <laughs> when you start to think about things yeah. and how it impacts you so definitely I think what you're doing is right you know keeping things out of the bedroom that can distract you is really good um and if you have if you use your phone for alarm clock get a, a manual alarm you know get yeah. a for a long call, right? <laughs> I know I cannot tell you how many people I've suggested this to and they're like well what do I do for an alarm I'm like there's a thing called an alarm clock that we all used to use and people just forget that's an option so it's a it's a really good option and ideally one that doesn't have blue light shining from it there are, I I actually just use my Fitbit which I could argue in my own way that I shouldn't wear my Fitbit to bed but for me, it's like the least of all evils right now. It just vibrates a little bit and that's my alarm clock and I love it. So there's nothing shining on me. But if you are going to get an alarm clock, try to get one that like dims at night or at least face it to the wall or something like that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. Watch out for those pesky little lights in your bedroom that might be for, you know, a little charger or something that, you know, those little those your, your body can pick up on light you know if you have a really dark room and you've got one or two of these lights from a cable or a charge it, it it can also throw your throw your body off yes absolutely all right so let's talk a little bit about eye health as it relates to nutrition which is my favorite uh area to talk about and i saw an instagram post of yours from last year that asked your followers to prioritize green vegetables because of lutein, zeaxanthin, and vitamin C and E. I was super excited about that Instagram post. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, definitely. You know, the eye, eyes are such a special um, sense of ours. And they, there was actually a research study done and asked people, you know, which of your senses would you like to lose least? And everyone, 90% of people say their, their eyes, right? Yeah. But day to day, 
90% of us don't actually look after our eyes yeah. because we only we only appreciate it when something goes bad. So, um, you know, the best way to look after your eyes is, is really simple. Um, it's having lots of green vegetables. And as you as you correctly mentioned, it has the main two ingredients, the lutein and zeaxanthin, which supports the macular pigment. Again, what we talked about before, where the macula is responsible for allowing you to see, see your central vision. But it's also your natural defense against UV and blue light. So... You know, if you're if you're making sure you're getting those green vegetables in, your natural defense, the blue light is actually going to be looked after as well. So you're boosting those elements. So yeah, green vegetables is my go-to. And then if you can get the omega threes in as well, that also supports um, maybe not the back of your eye, but the front of your eye. So we have glands around our eyes which um, deliver oils to the front surface of our eyes. So you know, when we blink, we lubricate our eyes, mm -hmm. and it's important we don't have dry eyes. Because when you get dry eyes, you also you, your vision can suffer because you get um you know get a you know a nasty not a clear kind of um cornea you get if you imagine a clean window if you've got yeah. muck on the window you're not going to yeah. see well out of it and that's yeah. what happens when you get dry eyes so omega-3s are really important so i think those are your two main ingredients when it comes to looking after your eyes okay so we all need a bunch of green vegetables and some fish flax chia walnuts However, you're going to get your omega-3s. I can support that fully. Thank you for that. Let's just throw you a curveball. Is there one health habit as a busy entrepreneur like you? Is there one health habit that has maybe nothing to do even with your eyes that you feel makes a big difference for you? Um, one health habit that makes a difference for me. Um, I really, so for me, what makes an impact is I like to have a tactical, so I'm, I'm not a big coffee drinker um, or I've never been a coffee drinker. I've just never enjoyed the taste. And um, I've actually, re you know, recently been reading actually coffee is good for you ah, yeah. <laughs> in how it can decrease, um, you know, cardiovascular diseases and it helps so much with vasodilation and making sure that you're, your, your blood flow is good. And so I've been having a tactical coffee mid mid afternoon, um, I'd say around 2 p.m. Um, and what that does, what it one, it counts as a slump after lunch, but two, it also it's been helping me long term, like mid to long term with how I feel day to day and just feeling generally better, um, you know, getting good quality coffee. in. so I only have one one, let's say one cup or yeah. Uh, one shot a day but for me that's made a massive impact and I think if th there may be pe people listening here who don't use utilize coffee or don't drink it but it tastes horrible like I used to but actually yeah. actually it has really it's really powerful as a as a ingredient so it's something to look at and uh, yeah help your health I love that calling it a tactical coffee I like the taste of coffee and you are absolutely right that for heart health and many other brain health cognition etc um there are benefits of coffee in moderation so for anyone listening who hears this and they're already drinking seven cups a day driven is not suggesting you bump that up to 12 cups a day there's a limit to everything and i think in research the limit is about two to three cups per day so um what you're doing is awesome. I'm going to start calling it a tactical coffee, especially if I choose to have another one in the afternoon. That's going to be my phrase. Thank you for that. No problem. <laughs> All right. So we talked about your products, OcuShield. I think this is maybe the hardest question I'll ask you the whole time. If listeners or if you could just choose one of your products, if you could only use one, which is your favorite product? Oh, it, it would have to be the OcuShield for your for your smartphone. Um, okay. we'll be, we carry those buggers around all the time wherever we are. And yep. yeah, that, that's the main one. <laughs> okay, well, I was just showing Druvin before I have the OcuShield shield for my smartphone and I have not yet put it on, but I promise you within 30 seconds of us getting off the call, that's going on my phone. Just for anyone listening who's not seeing us, it is a very... Um, I don't know, you wouldn't notice it. It's tempered glass. It doesn't have any kind of like frame that will alter the way your phone looks. It's very light. I feel it. So I can't imagine it's adding much weight to your phone. 
I imagine once I stick it on there, I won't even know it's on, except I know I'm doing something right for my body. Is that correct? Exactly. We, we want it to work in the background so it doesn't affect your day to day. Love it. Amazing. Well, Driven, this has been so great. I'm going to make some changes and I know our listeners will as well. Where can they get more information about OcuShield and follow along with you? Yeah, if you, um, if you type in OcuShield into Google, which is O-C-U-S-H, IELD, or if you go to our website, okishore.com, you can find out more about everything we do if you want to get deeper into the blue light topic as well. Um, if you want to reach out to me, any questions at all. So if you search Dhruvin Patel on Instagram or LinkedIn, you should be able to find me. And that's my first name spelled D H R U V I N and Patel P A T E L. Um, but yeah, happy to answer any questions. Amazing. We will put the link to OcuShield in the show notes. And in the blog post summary, we'll put the link to your Instagram as well. Um, And I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for your wisdom and your insight. No problem. And if anyone does want to need products, we can, uh, we'll create a code for your your listeners called Megan 20. So um, they can get 20% off as well. Amazing. What a gift. I highly recommend it. Um, So we'll put that code in the show notes as well for everyone. Thank you for that. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much. It's been great talking. You as well.